Hello, I'm Dr. Chris Cannon, a professor of medicine at Harvard Medical School and in the preventive cardiology section at the Cardiovascular Division at Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston. Today I'm here to discuss um, coronary artery calcium scoring and talk about the eligibility and how to interpret and use these results to decide whether or not to start a statin in your patient. So beginning with what is coronary artery calcification, it is the hallmark, it sort of is atherosclerosis. Um, it's directly proportional of how much calcium is in the artery to the development of cholesterol plaque within the artery. And then that has directly been correlated with the risk of cardiovascular events in multiple studies. And so the lipid treatment guidelines have then linked treatment intensity to calcium, uh, coronary calcium scores. And one can really individualize therapy based on the score that goes beyond just using the 10-year um, ASCVD risk score. So um, when is a coronary artery calcium score most useful? As in many tests, it's in the borderline cases of the intermediate risk people. And um, w examples of those are individuals, you know, 40 to, you know, I'd say up to 60 really begin, become more in the borderline, but it's relevant to older patients as well, where the ASCVD risk score might be lower, but they have multiple risk factors, such as really high LDL levels or family history. Um, and so the decision of whether to start a statin is less clear on the basis of just an ASCVD risk score. So uh, these medium risk patients also can sometimes be younger. Um, and so that often also is in women who have a lower risk at, at any given age of atherosclerosis. And so this becomes a really useful tool for diagnosing atherosclerosis in women uh, in particular. Now, when you get a calcium score that's not zero, that means that you have atherosclerosis, and that can then favor intensifying both the lifestyle interventions, but then uh, initiating statin therapy. And then this is very useful in people who hesitate, they've read lots of stuff on the internet and aren't sure, should I take a statin, is it safe, do I need it? This helps clarify if there's a need or not. Now, when is a calcium score not useful? Well, in people who already have diagnosed atherosclerotic disease, you don't need to do it because you've already got the answer. Another group of patients where we hesitate a little bit are in younger patients, so less than age 40. If you get a score of zero, uh, it's not as strong a, a negative predictor as if you got that at an older age in that sometimes people will have cholesterol building up and the calcium hasn't gotten into the plaque yet. If it's elevated at a young age, that's very useful because it tells you uh, that it's elevated. But in, uh, if you have a score of zero, you have to realize that there could be uh, non-calcified plaque in, in some of those uh, people. So how do I interpret the results? I think looking at the absolute score is probably the best predictor. And this has been looked at in you know tens and hundreds of studies probably at this point. Um, where the simple total number really correlates in a linear fashion. The higher it is, the higher the risk of atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease over the next five to 10 years. And so it's really terrific in guiding pharmacologic decisions. Others have looked at the percentile relative to um, others your age. And so that's often helpful in young patients that if they have a score of say, 30, but they're only 40 years old, that'll be the 90th percentile or something very high. And so that can often show you're worse than 90% of other people, and that can help guide uh, treatment as well. And I think broadly, uh, one can think about, uh, you know, a two-part <laughs> response that if you get a score of zero, that means there's no atherosclerosis. Often just lifestyle intervention is sufficient. 
I think if the LDL is really high, you try and get it down um, often to less than 100. Uh, but if it's in sort of a moderate range, then you can just continue with lifestyle only. If it's elevated, and you know, even in the single digits, it says that the process of atherosclerosis has started. And so then trying to slow that down with a statin, and studies have shown if you get the LDL to 70 or below, that that's when you can stop the process of progression of atherosclerosis. So if you did get a score of zero, when would you think about repeating it? And so this is an emerging strategy where if people are uh, lower risk, you can think about five to seven years is a time period where you could then reassess and see is it still zero. In higher risk patients, sometimes we'll do it a little sooner. Um, and so, you know, gauging the risk of the patient to how carefully you track them over time is, is laid out here. So another question that I often am asked is, should I use the calcium score to monitor treatment efficacy when people are on a statin? And the answer there is no, um, because the calcium score doesn't go down. Once the calcium's in there, it's there. And the progression uh, is not really gauged well by the amount of calcium. We're actually treating the cholesterol that's right near the calcium. And so um, that can be modified a lot and, and less so for the calcium. And so the calcium score itself is really not that helpful in judging response. And we really just look at the LDL levels largely. And then we'll screen patients for symptoms that we always have to be vigilant for as well. And so uh, I hope that this has been helpful. This is one of the major advances, I would say, in prevention in the last several years is to incorporate calcium scoring testing in our evaluation process. And as we went through, it's very helpful in the, the medium risk people and, and those where you're really not sure. And so it's been a wonderful new tool that can help get appropriate treatment to patients who need it, and then also not need to treat people who don't need uh, intensive treatment. And so helpful on both ends of the spectrum. And so I uh, want to encourage you to subscribe to Exchange CME's YouTube channel and check back regularly for other updates and, and new videos on, on these topics. So thanks very much for listening.